Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Tamara Johnson Sheely. Good morning. Good morning. We are Facebook L I V E. We're on Blog Talk Radio. We are on YouTube. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's see who's going to join us this morning. We're going to get started. Always an interesting uh, uh, broadcast. I put out a question this week. Had a lot of people to chime in, but I'd like to say good morning to those that are chiming in. Good morning. Good morning. I see them coming. They're coming. Good morning. Good morning, Gianna. Good morning. Who else is with us? Say good morning. Good morning. Hey, Lena. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Susan, who else is going to join us this morning? Every Friday morning at 11 a.m. This is our seventh wow, broadcast um, since uh, the May 22nd primary. And we have been talking and sharing and discussing. Good morning, Gretchen. Good morning. They're chiming in. Good morning. We have uh, always our in-house experts ready to chime in and, and have some great dialogue this morning. Of course, we have Mr. David Slavin. Uh, who's going to talk to us about acknowledging the divide. Um, uh, we're going to talk to Mr. John, John Armwood, who's going to talk to us about withholding the vote. So we're going to have some very candid conversations this morning, but I want to thank you for, for tuning in and ch chiming in. Today is Friday the 13th. Ooh. <laughs> For a lot of people that are superstitious, Friday the 13th is like, oh, black cats, bad things are going to happen. Not today. Today's going to be a good day. It's a little, uh, it's quite of a, a overcast here, but uh, it's definitely going to be a good day. So I want to thank you for chiming in. I actually put out a question this week on social media um, just to kind of get the ball rolling and just uh, the, um, start the conversation. Um, the thought of the day was um, on this past Tuesday. The question I posed was, why does asking black and brown people to think and vote strategically scare Democrats? That was my question of the day. Lots of comments, lots of people chimed in um, to, to, to have that conversation. And thank you for those that uh, took a moment to, to chime in. Good morning, Robbie. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so if you are not, if you are just joining the broadcast, please share this. Uh, we're hopeful that we'll start to create dialogue. This is just about talking and being, um, being what it, you know, being Democrats and making sure that we are in, all encompassing and bringing people into the fold who um, are sitting on the sidelines. Democrats, we have to be intentional about how we're going to win. And we can't keep uh, reaching out to the moderates as if they're going to come to our side. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So unpredictable. But if we go and get those people that are sitting on the sideline that you know, we can address the issues. We'll, we'll bring more, more and more people into the fold. So this is about um, bringing more and more people into the fold. So for those of you that are spreading these ugly, ugly rumors and having these awful conversations online about me um, withholding the vote and it meaning something really bad, it doesn't. I'm talking to those that are with, sitting on the sideline, withholding their vote, validating their silence. Democrats, we have to have hard conversations and so many of us are scared. Yeah, today is Friday the 13th, Democrats. So you know what? We're going to have a conversation about fear and being scared and, and not having the conversations that we need to have to bring more and more people into um, this Democratic tent so that we can win races. We're not going to win, you know, with doing what we're doing. The strategy has not worked. Um, as a three-time candidate, I can just tell you that, you know, I tried to listen and people say, well, you didn't listen. I tried to listen the first two times I ran. The third time I ran, I, I just had to just go for everything I knew and throw everything in because I knew that, you know, that third time was, was, was pivotal to moving the ball forward for us as Democrats and inside the Democratic Party. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the elephant in the room and there's an elephant in the room, Democrats. He's been there a long time. So let's address this elephant in the room, have these hard conversations. Um, and I thought today being Friday the 13th, it would be, it would be befitting to talk about fear um, and what fear is. We're gonna bring in our in-house uh, experts in just a moment, but it's Friday the 13th. 
Um, fear. What is fear? Fear in being fear. The definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief, keyword belief, that someone or something is dangerous, is likely to cause pain, or is a threat. Fear is to be afraid. Democrats, what are we afraid of? Why are we afraid to have these, these hard, hard conversations? Um, to be scared is to be fearful, to be frightened. Why are we, why, what are we scared of inside the Democratic Party? By not having these, these conversations, we are continuing uh, to lose. So I'm going to bring in um, Mr. Acknowledge the Divide himself, Mr. David Slavin. Y'all, I'm going to tell you a joke this morning with David. Hey, David, good morning. Good morning, Tamara. Good morning, David. Adjust your camera. We got a whole, uh, bring your camera down a little bit for me. Like that? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, David, you know, I, I will crack a joke on you this morning. David, let me tell you, not all black people are always late, okay? <laughs> me, me and John were on time this morning to the broadcast, and David was on CP time. <laughs> <laughs> so that misnomer about, you know, the CP time and black people always being late. I'm challenging the stereotypes. Yes, you are, David. <laughs> <laughs> he stresses me out because when he's late, stereotypes. yeah, when, when you're late, I'm like frazzled, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, good good, I'm, good. I'm getting used to it. Uh, yeah, I know. Good morning, David. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Yeah. So did you, did you see that question I put out there? Yeah. About yeah. Black and brown people to think and vote strategically. Mm -hmm. Why does that scare Democrats? Well, uh, you know, you're talking about fear. And uh, in some ways, I think this may be a fear of winning. Well, fear of winning? Yes. Elaborate, David. Go yeah. in. There are several things that I think are going on, one of which is that it is that, that is, is almost entirely ignored is that it's a, uh, a very specific relationship between race and gender on the one side and class on the other. They're not simply equal, you know, uh, categories of racism, sexism, and classism. Um, uh, the, the racial privilege and gender privilege are about social control. And social control is about maintaining control over the working class, which includes black and brown people and women and European Americans. Um, uh, they are in, in, in uh, diametrically opposed statuses, uh, but they are all, as working people, exploited by the, uh, by the, you know, the, um, the people who own, uh, own capital, who own the businesses and the and the corporation. So, um, uh, if you have a group of, of people who think they are white, in other words, they identify with the ruling elite, with the bosses, with the employers, with the corporations, um, you are you are left uh, with uh, a divided working class, a separate and unequal working class that doesn't, doesn't speak to each other and doesn't think strategically. Now, uh, morning, everyone. <laughs> so the, um, uh, that is the, is the issue for us underlying. The underlying issue for Democrats is that, um, is that the, the Republicans, by appealing to rent, have been able to uh, capture, in effect, capture the uh, uh, the votes of a certain an upper strata of European American working people enough for them to have dominance electoral dominance and the uh, the for the rest of the of the of the you know working class there are two things that happen one is that they are discouraged from voting just that there's a lot of suppression that goes on in this country just as part of the normal background noise of of uh, of working people not being able to get to the poll, polls, all right? Uh, then there is the deliberate targeted voter, voter suppression that goes on. Uh, that includes gerrymandering and voter caging and all of these other things that are targeted against people of color for the most part, all right? So we really have two layers, separate and unequal, of voter suppression. One is people are discouraged, and the other one, people are actively turned away. 
All right. Um, what that means is that that uh, that for what we might call the the the, the I don't want to get too confusing about it, but the real middle class that is the nine point nine percent of the of the, the, the upper income bracket. David, we're having a little uh, feedback issue, so um, ask the audience, please chime in if you are, ha hopefully you guys aren't having too much of a difficulty hearing me or hearing David, uh, chime in somebody and let us know. Um, technology guys, uh, the internet, the, and that one thing I find is that when the weather's a little, uh, you know, we're, we're having, you know, cloudiness or bad weather that the internet is a, 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 can be a, a bit challenging with doing a broadcast that's live. So. Chime in if you are having problems. Hopefully, uh, you're you're able to hear David or and myself pretty well. Um, but keep going, David. It's it's just a little choppy this morning. So the background uh, um, uh, voter suppression that goes on is this just making it difficult for working people to get to the polls, um, making it uh, registration for voting. Why should there have to be registration for voting, or why can't there be uh, you know, all across the country, uh, anybody who is a citizen is automatically registered to vote um, uh, at at any place that they that they can. This is part of what the motor voting uh, rules uh, were trying to do, uh, and why there has been so much effort. On the uh, on the other hand, to, uh, uh, to gerrymander and to uh, to challenge the vote. Democrats David, let me let me ask you. Let me ask you. So. Go back to the root of the question about fear, because I think we're, I'm a little kind of lost with your uh, with where you're going. So mm -hmm. all back, because the question is, why does asking black, black and brown people to think and vote strategically scare Democrats? And your answer is that they're afraid of winning. So help us to bring it all kind of full circle so we're not losing. Okay. Um, um, in, the, in this day and age, winning for Democrats means uh, doing policy that redistributes income and wealth downward on the social scale to from the richer to the poorer. And uh, uh, Democrats, like Republicans, are, are a party that's made up primarily of people who are in the 9.9 percent, uh, the, the top 10 percent of the of the income bracket. They are going to lose. OK. They okay, are so lose if there is an income redistribution downward. Okay, so you're saying that the the fear is winning, and if we as Democrats win, then the who platform and the program of the of the of the Sanders and uh, Elizabeth Warren and all of the other people who are involved in the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Is going to mean uh, uh, if they can if they can get control of the party and of the of the of the uh, of the government at the state and 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 federal level, it's going to mean a change in tax structure in uh, in uh, regulations uh, over uh, you know over businesses. Um, it's going to increase costs for for uh, for 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 businesses, um, and it is going to. Uh, Increase access and and shift the increase access to um, uh, uh, to to employment, increase access to education, it's going to shift uh, the, uh, the tax structure, and uh, it's going to increase the bargaining power of working people over their bosses. If you have a Medicare for all system. In other words, a single payer universal system. That means you are no longer dependent on your boss. You're dependent on your citizenship for um, uh, for access to um, uh, to health care. So what you're saying is that if Democrats, black and brown Democrats voted strategically and the top of the, the food chain, those Democrats, the elite, the nine point nine percent, yes, they would have to share power or we would we would. They would. Their fear is that we would take over. Yes, exactly, exactly. So mm. uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. As you go down the income scale, the the the, the voter participation declines, so that the poorest people vote the you know vote uh, uh, 
lower proportions of poor people vote than than people who are in the 9.9 percent. Let's just let's just uh, take it from you know from that that point of view. However, I have a sneaking suspicion, and I haven't got the, the statistics because they're not out there. Nobody's done this one. I would say that it's very likely that that black and uh, black working people, brown, um, Latino working people, not so much, but black working people at their income level, at the income level that they're at, are voting at higher proportions than white uh, white voters. So if you're making thirty thousand dollars a year, which is poor, really poor in this country, I'll bet you the number of the voter participation for blacks is much higher than for whites who are at that thirty thousand. Okay. So you're saying that poor, poor blacks, poor black and brown people uh, with with a lower income, they are more likely, you believe, are more, they're the ones that are voting over the white voters that are in that same income bracket. Yeah, their, their, their voter proportion, voter participation proportions are higher. They're reaching among black women, I think, they're pro, that black women are voting at a higher rate overall than, uh, than whites. And, uh, and uh, that, that, what that means is that, uh, and there, are, there ain't that many black women that are in that 9.9%, you know? So they are voting at higher rates than whites uh, in, in, you know, in the Democratic Party or outside of the Democratic Party. And guess what? These, these folks, black people in particular, are voting for a working class program. They're voting for a working class platform. Everything that they are voting for, every t- every, and, and they are so active uh, in, the, in the electoral process, um, uh, everything they are voting for is in the interests of the working class as a whole. That means they are already thinking strategically. Mm. They're already thinking strategically. It's just that we got to get these idiot poor whites. I, I'm, I'm being very frustrated here, and uh, and I don't need to say that, you know, um, uh, as a as a, a derogatory. But if we could show them that the platform, the support, uh, the things that that black women and and black men are supporting, are in their interests, they would they would be activated to vote. So, yeah. and what that would do is that would change the balance of power within the Democratic Party. So those folks who are control the Democratic Party now are scared. They have every right to be scared. Mm. Well, let me put the call in number up. It's uh, 929-477-3442, 929-477-3442. You know, David and I and John, we are very good at just talking. But come on, we need to hear from you. Uh, chime in. Uh, we are, again, I put the, the call in number up. It's 929-477-3442. We would definitely uh, love to hear from you. Uh, David, yeah, uh, the, uh, the fear is real. The fear is real. And you're right. They do have every right to be afraid because if black and brown people strategically, literally strategically said, you know what? We're going to start voting our interests. We're going to start. We're going to be more and more engaged. Oops, David. Sorry about that. Then uh, the, the Democrats, the elites would definitely have a have a problem. They would definitely have a problem. Yeah. And uh, and there are people who are who reject the Democratic Party um, uh, who say that what's happening in the Democratic Party is what they call. This is um, I'm not sure. Who do, we, who do we acknowledge about this? But they call it sheep dogging. Sheep dogging. Sheep dogging. Okay, yeah. I've never heard that word before. Bring me up. Tell me what that means. Rounding, sheep dogging. Yeah, rounding up the progressive votes um, to, to uh, support the Democratic Party without having a Democrat, without having a progressive working class platform, without having a program that serves the interests. Of the uh, of the working people, um, if we have if we have Democrats who are trying to appease uh, the the moderate Republicans, who are a tiny sliver at this point of the of the potential electorate, um, that's what they are doing. They are they are 
uh, are undermining the, uh, uh, the the program and platform that could actually win support of working people. Uh, and by that I mean, uh, uh, so it's, it's crucial for black people to insist that they not be taken for granted. They're fighting for the whole, for the interests of all working people. When mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's right. something that David, that, that we've been talking about a lot that, you know, black and brown people are tired of being taken for granted. We're tired of, of casting these votes and these politicians not live up to the things they say. They get in office and forget about the things they said they were going to do. And black and brown people are tired. That's why you have so many people sitting on the sidelines that yeah. don't trust this system, that don't believe in this system. And you know, we, 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 we have to do better. Yeah, and let me just say that the that it seems to me, and I this this is sort of the direction that I'm going in this. We either have to get out of the Democratic Party or we have to transform it. And the way to the the, the way I didn't say it, y'all. He did. <laughs> the, way that, the way that we're going to transform the Democratic Party is by 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 black working people. Putting forward their program and 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 European American whites who are in the Democratic Party taking that program to working class whites. Mm -hmm. That's the way that we're gonna that we're gonna take control of the Democratic Party. Black people don't have anywhere to go. They don't have anywhere else to go except into a third party movement. And uh, and it's possible that that's that that's a uh, uh, that that's a direction to stop from being taken for granted but it seems to me it might be a simpler solution if we if we don't reject out of hand the idea that we can't win over working class whites and that's why it's imperative not that the Trump, they're not in the Trump camp yeah and that's why david it's imperative that we acknowledge the divide and that's why all that you're saying and all that you're doing is so important because white people have to acknowledge where we are and what the issues are and, and how to solve it, because it becomes. Um, the, so when you just made a comment a second ago, I want to kind of backtrack a bit <laughs> um, that black people don't have anywhere to go. I posted an article uh, about um, Candace Owens, who is a, a conservative black woman who's all over Fox Media. They, at, the conservatives absolutely love her. And she she made a uh, there was an article about her saying that there was going to be a mass exodus of, of black Democrats and, and they were coming to the. To the uh, Dem to the Republican Party, um, so I don't think when you say that Black people have nowhere to go, that they don't have anywhere to go. Some, 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 S O M E, some Black people, Black and Brown people, are jumping ship and going to the uh, going on the other side. But those are most of us. I can attest as a Black woman, most of us are um, sitting on the sidelines. We're we're just we're just not participating at all. Well, I, I certainly think that uh, Trump did su surprisingly better than expected among black voters. Surprisingly better than expected. Um, and, uh, and, and that is, you know, his, his uh, uh, question to black people, well, he wasn't really talking to black people, but what have you got to lose? Um, you know, the Democrats don't, don't you know, protect your interests, serve your needs. Etc. Um, but going into the into the Republican Party is like shooting yourself in the foot. You know, I mean, it, it's uh, um, uh, you you know the, the, there's a reason why the Republican Party is 90, 95, 98 percent white. You but then know. I'm gonna tell you, David. There's a, there's a, like I say, some black people that are entering into the Republican Party, and it's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of strategy around us being in all parts of, of, of politics and, and, and getting involved politically. And I don't think it's a bad strategy that for those that believe that they should, you know, that's where they want to be. If they're there and they're mm -hmm. a, a positive impact for the needs of black and brown communities, if they're able to, you know, get something done on the other side, like just to be over there just because you feel like you belong. Uh, that's one thing. But going over into that side and going into the Republican Party with intent on making it making um raising the issues of black and brown communities i think it's a strategy i think it's, it could it's, it could be possibly be very strategic i don't think there's a one size fit all when it comes to how black and brown people need to move to maneuver mm -hmm. politically because 
You know what? The Democrats have shown us who they are. And when people show you who they are, believe them. I have one quick story and then we're going to see if we have any callers. But call in, everybody. We got the number up on the screen. It's 929-477-3442. But I have a quick story. When I ran um, for the Senate District, for Senate District 40, um, along the way in the very beginning, very beginning, I had um, an elected official who was a Republican say to me, um, you know, you can have this if you want it. And I think I told you this story, David, it literally scared the hell out of me because I was like, I don't want it this bad. <laughs> I knew that I was not going to play in that or in that playground and in that sandbox. That was not something I, I, I wanted to do. But I knew that the door was open if that was something that uh, I wanted to do politically, but not some, you know, I felt like that was the devil. <laughs> so not take that route, but I can just tell you that those that are venturing into inside of the Republican Party that are black and brown, I ain't mad at them as long as they're over there and it's strategic that you're there. Um, let's see who's if anybody is chiming in, David. I'm definitely going to bring you back um, at the at the tail end of this broadcast, but we're going to see um, talk with Mr. John, Mr. John Armin, who is um, our uh, withhold the vote. He and I have been talking uh, pretty candidly about what it means to withhold the vote uh, in uh, in this uh, age of Trump. How you doing, Mr. John? John? Uh-oh. We have no volume. John, can you hear me? Oh, gosh. Well, let's see if we can uh, figure out what's going on here. Uh, John, we may have to bring David back. Let's see here. John, <laughs> y'all, technology sometimes is not our friend, and we just have to keep moving. Good morning, John. It's his screen might be frozen, and he can't see. So what I'm going to do is put Mr. Armin back in the lobby. I'm going to bring David back. Please dial in. Again, I'm going to put the number up on the screen. Dial in. He was having some issues with his uh, David. John was having some issues. Technology, guys, it, it ain't always our friend. So, David. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do we do to win? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? Let's see, John. Let's see. He's back, y'all. Let's see. He was having some serious technical difficulties. We have to. There he is. There he is, John. <laughs> oh, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? <laughs> oh yes, I was hearing you. I was using a different computer. And for some oh. reason, the Chromebook didn't, I could see you, I could hear you, but <laughs> you couldn't hear me on the microphone, so I had to switch back to the MacBook. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming back, John. Technology, I tell you, you know, we just roll with the flow and just make it happen, right? Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Yeah, so Henrietta said, good morning, John. <laughs> good morning, Henrietta. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, John, you know, the question that we posed was, what does, um, why does asking black and brown people to think and vote strategically, why does that scare Democrats? You and I talk very candidly about, you know, the vote and the power of the black and brown vote. I get, in, I get encouraged when I, when I think about the power of the black and brown vote, particularly those people that are sitting on the sidelines. I took a lot of, uh, I took a lot of, of, of hits this week from those that are on social media that so don't get what we're saying and what we're doing. I think sometimes they just want to argue, John, but they can uh, take that somewhere else. But nevertheless, um, I get encouraged by the black and brown vote because those are numbers, John, that we can count if we can galvanize and organize and encourage and empower uh, black and brown people to be engaged. And if for nothing else and for no other reason, John, if we get them to vote their interest, they may not vote down the ballot, but if we can get them to, to jump in and fit in where they fit in, those are numbers that we can count. So we as Democrats have to be intentional about having these hard conversations about race, racism and race relations and withholding the vote and how much of a strategy that is. So many people say that, you know, people have died for us to have this right to vote, but they died for the strategy for us to have this right to vote. Not just we're just going to vote and just give our vote away and any anybody with a D behind their name, they get our vote. Hell no. Remember that? That was from uh, Color Purple, Miss, Miss Millie and, and Oprah Winfrey. And she said, hell no. Not everybody with a D behind their name can get that, that, that vote. So, John, I want you to jump in and talk about uh, that strategy. 
Okay. Well, first of all, when I first saw you withhold the vote, I started laughing to myself because it immediately struck me as wow, Tamara is talking Dirac. Spike Lee's movie. How many of you all saw that movie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dirac Spike Lee. It's you know about Chicago and the violence. And the black women put their foot down and said, if y'all gangs don't stop fighting, we're gonna withhold the sex. And that's based upon Aristophanes' Greek comedy from way back when. And so withhold the vote, I see Tobias said exactly the same thing to the Democratic Party. We revolutionized the Democratic Party in the 1960s when the Bush rights came out down south. Black elected officials whoop into office. Even George Trump, Mr. Segregation, now segregation forever, had to support back black votes in Alabama because we couldn't win without them. Now we're at the point where we're being taken for granted. We're saying, oh, we know those nice liberals are going to vote for us. So we're going to focus on those conservative white swing districts. We can always count on the black vote. That's the problem. That's the address. And a lot of folks say, a lot of folks say stay home because they know the game. They know the game. They know the game that's being played on them. Yeah, they don't want to be played. Um, I know one person in particular that I can think about who is, we've discussed this immediately. He doesn't believe it. He's saying it's like twiddle dee or dum I'm not getting involved in it because that's not what I want to do. And there are a lot of people, intelligent, thoughtful people, who make the decision to stay home because candidates are not responding to their agenda. What is their agenda? Education, health care, housing, jobs. Real simple. Education, healthcare, housing, jobs. Those are the issues that affect us as black, as us as brown, and us as working people. This is, this is the issue. And so many of the, the candidates do not address that issue. And they don't follow through. They use the, those issues as talking points to like bait us Reel us in, reel us in. Come on, black and brown people. We, you know, sending out mailers with black people on it, or sending out mailers with black children on it, trying to make us make it an emotional appeal to the black community. No. How about make it? Uh, how about tell the truth? And when you get in office, don't forget about who got you there. Yeah, the story is always told. People always talk about. You know, they only come around when it's election time, mm-hmm. talking this stuff, and then we don't see them until next election. Mm -hmm. That has to stop. We have to hold people accountable. That is what withhold the vote is. You want our vote? Earn it. Damn. Earn it. (laughs) Our vote is not for free. It's not for free. And we've been giving it away and giving it away and giving it away. So we go back to the question, why does black and brown, why does asking black and brown people to think and vote strategically, why does that scare Democrats, John? Because we've done it before. We did it to Republicans in the early 1930s. When we switched, we were all voting Republicans from the end of the Civil War, when the few of us that could vote did vote. And then when Roosevelt came and had an agenda that was a little bit more progressive, we switched and voted Democrat. And and, and, and in a good number. And in the 60s, after Goldilocks ran for president, Goldwater ran for president, we switched in massive numbers. We're not discouraging black folks at all for voting. We're saying, tell these candidates and make it clear that we are not coming out unless you address our agenda, plain and simple. And it doesn't mean talking it, it means walk or walk. we want legislation that supports it. We don't want these backroom deals and then all of a sudden our issue gets siphoned off. Mm-hmm. If you're going to have a government shutdown, stand up and go through with it. 
Yep. And let's be real intentional about what the ask is. You know, don't just talk about it. And, you know, some of that th those resources that are uh, on a state level, on a federal level, those resources need to be funneled into, into black and brown communities. We need to change. You go into some of these, um, you know, these congressional districts, these Senate districts, these House districts. You can tell where the money is and where the money ain't. Come on now. Can't pave the roads. Can't get the street light fixed. You, you know, policing is not done properly. They're not held accountable and they don't show up. We had a situation this past week in Atlanta where a lady called the police in, in Mayretta, the old folks, and it took 40 minutes for them to come after somebody had held her at gunpoint. I know you all saw it on, on, on the news. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. this is, and, and this is lack of accountability. This has to stop. We have to make sure that we punish elected officials who talk the talk but don't walk the walk. Yeah, That's Democrats and Republicans say that again we're on the same page. We need to punish elected officials who do not walk the walk when they after they talk the talk. We have to punish them, make examples of them, say, okay, that's the way you treat us. This is the way we're gonna treat you. That is what withhold the vote means. It means that we are going to vote strategically for our agenda. And if you don't follow our agenda, we're gonna stay home or go somewhere else. Look for somebody else who will. Mm -hmm. Plain and so, so, so that's so, why they're scared. Oh yeah. That young lady in the Bronx scared the daylights out of them. Because the folks in my old congressional district, the 19th and in, in, in the 14th brother in New York, that's what they did. They threw out the fourth leading Republican because he was too busy hanging, playing power politics in Washington and not dealing with that poor black and Hispanic community. And a young 28 year old came along and she ran, she went in the neighborhood because she was from there and destroyed him by seven points. And you all know what I'm talking about. It was all over the news. Yep. So That's call in. I'm going to put the call in number up. Call in. You, I swear, some of these people, you know, it's so funny that so many people on social media, they will type to their fingers bleed. But ask them to call in and be a part of this broadcast. Awesome. <laughs> Ask them to call in, John, and talk out loud is like scary. So they scared. Friday the 13th for them. This Friday the 13th for them. Uh-oh, y'all. Technology, y'all, stay with me. Stay with me. <laughs> we got it right. Everything Friday the 13th for some of these folks. Yes, Friday the 13th, but then it's like they're afraid, but they will type to their fingers turn blue. They say all this stuff on social media. I invite people to the broadcast because what I won't do is sit on social media and type, 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 type and, and fuss with people. Why? We can have a conversation, an intellectual dialogue, if you'd like, right here, live on Facebook, live on YouTube, live on blog talk. Let's have the conversation because this is where we get past it all. But so many people are scared, scared Democrats, scared to talk about race, scared to talk about racism, scared to talk about withholding the vote, scared to talk about strategy. That's why we keep losing, John. You're right. You're right. If we have an agenda that people can actually see when they vote, all of a sudden those lights are, are fixed, the roads are paved, the police act like we're people. <laughs> They stop killing black kids on the street. We'll see the difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fear. So thinking. So asking black and brown people to think and vote strategically scares Democrats because guess what? We might, we might get some stuff done, and I don't know. Do they feel left out? Somebody chime in. I'll let David um, come back and talk about that with acknowledge the divide. Do will they feel like uh, we're going to take something from them? Black and brown people putting their issues on the forefront is going to take anything from white people? Is that the fear? Is it, you know, pri your privilege is going to be taken if we put black and brown issues on the forefront? That's the solidarity David, that David always talks about. So, you know, with, withholding the vote is a strategy and it's a good strategy. Right, John? Oh, yeah. It, I mean, and to some extent, 
it is a zero sum game because meaning that there is a pie mm -hmm. of economic goodies of so social goodies that have to be divided that's what yeah. white privilege is about they have had exclusive access to a lot of those goodies depending on the mm -hmm. neighborhood you go into the streets look really nice and paid the lights work you don't see garbage around everything is taken care of when they call have something done it's done in other neighborhoods it's not so if they're not going to spend the resources in our neighborhoods that means they're going to have to allocate them differently which means that some of the rich folks may not get as much as they have been right. getting and that's okay because it's our tax money our oh you are our, our. That means that's one, it's one pool, it goes in and we need to make sure we serve all communities collectively and, and make sure that, you know, we're taking care of, like for instance, like, you know, I always look at like DeKalb County, for example, north and south of DeKalb. I swear once you get past a certain part of, uh, you know, drive up 285, you're in a different, you're in my district, you're in a whole nother zone. But then when you go down to south of DeKalb, you're like, you turn the lights off. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So that is scary. Because people you know, don't want to lose their So we have to intimidate them and let them know that we're going to take it. And we're going to take it by withholding our vote if necessary. And sometimes that decision is going to make them lose and their opponents win. And that might be okay in a strategic situation. <laughs> And they come back next time with a candidate who is accountable. And we have to acknowledge that risk and say, okay, we're going to throw the gauntlet down. You want to win? Deliver to us or you're going to lose. Okay, I'm going to read something. Um, it's pretty um, extensive here, but she's, um, I wish you would have called in, Lena, and, and said this, but I'm going to read it. It says, you want the truth, Tamara? Those white people in local Democratic Party are scared of you. They say things like you don't do the work, et cetera, because they want to use intimidation tactics to stop you from what you are doing. Don't let them. You are working your way and you don't have to explain that to anyone. Thank you, Lena. Yeah, I know they're talking about me. And guess what? I've, I've, I've learned to love my haters. I actually have a, a hater online uh, uh, that made some ugly comments and was just trying to entice me to, to have an argument with, with him online. And I didn't. I told him I loved him and I thanked him for keeping me uh, in the, on the forefront. Thank you for following me. Thank you for um, making me relevant. Thank you, haters. <laughs> so I'm not going to stop talking. I am not going to stop telling the truth because all of you know that this comes from a good place. Those of you that know me, I'm about people. I love all people. Um, there was somebody um, on, on, you know, wanted me to address the LBGTQ community. I love all people and I will fight and support all people. So, you know, I, I don't, the, you know, trying to make me um, out to be something that I'm not, bring it on because I'm, the proof is in the pudding. I've done enough work in my district over the last three election cycles. And I'm not sure who will run three times. I, you know, I was looking at Bernie Sanders the other day and I'm, I'm encouraged, John, about, you know, his story is so intriguing to me because, I mean, Bernie ran four times before he was ever elected. I mean, so I'm not afraid of failure. I'm not afraid to lose because I know that that sometimes losing is winning. And I won in a lot of in a lot of other ways. I've won. Um, you guys are continuing to follow. We're going to do some great work. We're going to push the Democratic Party, particularly right here in Georgia. We're going to push. We ain't asking no more. We pushing, we taking, and we telling you what we want. Now, if you don't get on board, Democrats, guess what? We going to what, John? What? We hold the vote. Don't we play with us. The vote. There it is. Either we all win and we win together, or you ain't going to win. <laughs> I said it. Go run, tell that. <laughs> <laughs> I love everybody and I love people. I, I actually love being in, in politics, you know, and, and somebody just made a comment. Run again. I am. Stay tuned. I am not going anywhere. <laughs> Stay tuned.
Keep running and don't stop. Stay tuned. I am. Stay tuned. I'm not going anywhere. So, John, we got work to do. We have people to organize and galvanize and encourage and empower. We're going to get these people off the sidelines. We're going to give them something. We're going to give them a reason to, to run to the polls. We're going to talk to them. We're going to, you know, we're, we're going to do the work. And that's what the Democratic Party is supposed to be doing. Right, John? Yeah. But in many ways, they don't see it as their interest. And so we have to raise the decision cost for them not seeing it as their interest because we're not going to be their tools. We're not going to be used like a handy wipe and then thrown away when they get off. It's not going to happen. That's over. Resistance is not. Yep. There it is. There it is. And we have to work um, collectively um, to, in order to make this happen. I'm going to bring, um, you know, like I say, so many people, I promise you, David, you should, I mean, John and, and David, I promise y'all, if y'all could see the number of comments and people that are like, uh, like coming for me online and they have so much to say. And I ask them, join me on the broadcast. Come talk to me out loud. Say it to my face. And they won't. Fear. Fear. Yeah. See well, the dreams that people should fear. Seeing that fear. unnecessary fear. coming, it will come. Shakespeare. <laughs> yes. We're going to bring David back into the broadcast. We only have, um, we're going to uh, have a few more minutes online here. But David. Hi, I'm back. David, yeah. David pull that camera down. There you go. <laughs> David is uh, notorious for sitting down in the chair. <laughs> I know you. My posture, my mom would get very upset with me. I'm not sitting up straight. <laughs> <laughs> sit up. Look, we, we all better sit up straight. Okay, sit up straight. <laughs> awesome. Good one, man. Good one, John. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this, this thing about fear, you know, how do we, you know, Democrats, in order to win, we have to address the elephant in the room is fear. And it's fear for, for in, 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 the, in the perspective of race and it's fear, um, you know, with economics. It's just, they're just scared, David. You know, I know yeah. you're taking notes. Let me say that uh, that I think that what you and John, the dialogue that you were having, um, really seems to me to be what uh, Bruce Dixon called sheepdogging. You know, that that's what the Democrats have been doing to uh, uh, to black folk and, uh, and, and others. They're sheepdogging. Uh, in other words, they're rounding up the votes. Um, and uh, and as if you know, we're you know, we meaning you uh, as African Americans are um, a sheep, you know, um, and that that I think is re really an important part of the, of the of the issue. Now, here's another thing. Another thing is uh, is why would you as a uh, as a as a party uh, leave votes on the table? Let's talk about what about that. Leaving votes on the table means that you are not uh, mobilizing the people who would be um, easily brought in to vote on on your side. If you're doing something as 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 politically stupid, and there are so many shrewd uh, party um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 people who are advisors, you know, and and, uh, and party. Uh, officials in the Democratic Party, we either have to say that they're that they're stupid, or that they're doing it deliberately, that they have that they have limitations on what they are willing to offer or propose, and that's what I'm suggesting is going on uh, when it comes to this issue of of class uh, and the and the interaction with race. The only way that working class whites are going to be able to to come into the Democratic Party is if if black people think strategically and say these people are our natural allies, not just not just allies, but people who have the same strategic interests as we do. Everything that John said um, about um, uh, education, healthcare, housing, jobs, and of course the environment as well, um, and the uh, and the the treatment of uh, of uh, uh, of of the of the police of police accountability are all in the interests of a large portion of white working people 
And uh, they don't know it. They don't know it because nobody goes out and tries to organize them. Their votes are left on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just by yeah, let me tell you what we're doing, because um, those of you that don't know, I come from the beauty and barber industry. So the other side of what I do, and, and everybody has, you know, you know, people that don't understand that industry try to belittle it. But I can tell you that uh, beauty and barber professionals are more than just artists. Um, they're, they're very smart and very intelligent and very in tune with what's happening in the communities and, and around them, because they're, they're, these people are sitting in their chairs every single day and they're very influential. Let me say that part again. My industry is very influential when it comes to encouraging people and, and, and pushing people and, and, you know, getting stuff done. Um, so one thing that we're doing, David, on the heels of what you just said is the organizing. Um, we are intentional about organizing our uh, beauty and barber professionals because we know that they not only have large clientele, they have families, they have friends. And then those families and friends, you know, we're able to do a lot of stuff. So. You're right. Organizing and, and getting people and having these conversations um, in these communities, they're not talking to them. But guess what? We know where they are. Yeah. Well, that's that is really a crucial part of this, because one of the things that makes it difficult for European American working class uh, uh, of whites, you, you can't find them. They're not they don't want to be identified that way. They have people in their families who are part of the 9.9%. They are hoping, hoping, hoping that they're going to join them, that they're going to be pulled up into those ranks. Believe me, they are not. You know. Yeah, John, and John is shaking, is, is shaking his head. John, what's your thoughts on that? Because you were shaking your head. You were nodding and agreeing with David. That is the name of the game. To get working class whites to identify with the upper class, the top 10% and, and have that dream. I can be there too. That has been the game since the beginning of the, this American experiment to keep the white working class in line by saying, yeah, one day you can achieve the American dream. Right. Unfortunately, too often it's an American nightmare. It's a nightmare for black and brown people, I can tell you for sure. And I was actually listening to some, um, you know, I listen to all kinds of different, I like YouTube videos because you, you can kind of, and I like, I like the history and I love talking to David and I love talking to John because I feel like I learned so much and there's so much to learn about, you know, what's, what has happened and what is continuing to happen. I was listening to some, some Martin and I was listening to some Malcolm and some Muhammad Ali and I was thinking about where they were in that era. And, and politically where we were as a nation in that era. And to, to hear it, it sounds so familiar to today. I don't, I'm like, this was, they were talking about that as, as if I felt like they were living it right now here today. Right, right. And that, that was talking that, about it in, 1850, in the 1850s. Yeah. That, that idea that there, is a, that there is a culture war going on uh, that John is, is, is describing. Um, where where white working people have been saturated by both flattery and threats at the same time, both flattery and threats to think that their that their privileges make them white. I think we ought to have a T-shirt that says on the front a T-shirt that says "I'm not white." You know, for <laughs> European Americans to have to have this T-shirt, big bold letters that says "I'm not white," and on the back of the T-shirt. T-shirt. It says, "And neither are you." <laughs> okay, and and get people get people start thinking about about what their status really is, because the the elites want them to think that they are part of the ruling race, and they are they uh, that 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 doing that and being deputized. Remember, I was talking about this idea of power with versus power over, uh, being deputized. To uh, uh, to lord it over other working people, to uh, to threaten them, to be part of the of the power over uh, structure, but you don't get a damn thing out of it. Pardon my language. You're not getting a darn thing out of it. Um, um, is the is is the name of the game, uh, and uh, and the uh, the, uh, uh, the that's the challenge that that we have. Is to and it's very hard to separate people out 
from that that identification, but it's not impossible. It's been done over and over and over again. It's just that everything that's been done has been tactical rather than strategic. And so we keep the 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 ruling elites shift the game, they shift the privilege structure, and 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 the white working people fall for it. They 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 uh, they, they take the bait, and they get hooked. They get they get on the hook. And that's why the strategy, and you're right, David, and that's why the strategy behind um, withhold the vote, John, that's why that strategy is so important. The, the thinking and voting strategically, like David said, it's been so much, it's been tactical, but now we have to be strategic with how we vote as black and brown people. Right, John? Oh, definitely. And we have to make it clear to the candidates so they are aware that we're doing it. We yeah. want no misunderstandings. We want to be clear. And you will be held accountable. If you make a promise and we vote for you and you don't come through with the promise, we're going to run other candidates against you. And if we don't lose, we may just, just not vote in that particular election. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've we've seen two glaring examples of the of the strategy that the centrist Democrats have been taking in the last couple of years. One is the is is the Hillary campaign and the other one is the Ossoff campaign. And uh and it does not work. It does not work. Come on folks. And not when you have David and not when you have your 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 base sitting on the sidelines. It's yeah. like Got to go down into the trenches. Go down and get those people. Put on some jeans. Throw on a T-shirt. Put on a baseball cap. Have a real conversation, and you better be genuine. Because let me tell you something: if you go down there in disguise and and try to be that on the outside, and that is not who you are on the inside, let me tell you something about black and brown people. Our intuition, our spirit, our spirit man, the God in us, we're gonna see straight through you. We're gonna see straight through you. So you can come down here. You can play with us if you want to. Trust me, you'll still lose because we're going to see straight through you. So don't just talk the talk, as John was just saying. You better walk the walk. And when you get elected and then you get in office, you better remember who put you there. Because those of us who put you there will take you out of there at the same time. Now, where have we heard that before? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Who is that? Is that Maxine? Or is that talking about our parents? We <laughs> we'll take you out. <laughs> we, put, yeah, we, put, we bought you in this world and we'll take you out. <laughs> we, we put you in office and we'll take you out of office. So we're going to watch policy. We're going to watch these candidates. We're going to pay attention to every word you say, every move you make. We're going to be on you like party. white on rice. White on rice. <laughs> <laughs> we're coming for you. Candidates and elected officials, we're going to be watching you. Step by step, we're going to hold you accountable. We're going to acknowledge the divide. We're going to continue to have these hard conversations. We're going to acknowledge the divide every week, 11 a.m. We're going to keep talking. We're going to have hard conversations. We give you an open platform. Those of you that want to call in, we have the number up on the screen. You don't call in. You, you're scared. No reason to be afraid. No reason. No reason to be afraid. David, I'm going to put your website up. It's, he's on my website, guys, at TamaraShealy.com forward slash acknowledge the divide our website for withhold the vote is in uh it is in uh in the works so be uh be on the be on the lookout for that but we're going to continue to have these hard conversations uh we're going to continue to give you a platform to talk uh, we do have somebody that's chiming in at the end of the show so we're going to take this caller this this one caller our last caller uh, let's see who this is let's see Caller, are you with us? Yes, I am. Go, go right ahead. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. We have we have noise in your background. You might want to get the background noise.
are are just so disappointed with the way things have gone in this country and are withholding the vote because of that. And when you try to talk to those that that refuse to vote, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. So my question is, how do we get those people to turn around and to want to vote again because a lot of them are vehemently saying, no, I am not going to vote. So what do you suggest as far as um, giving strategies as to how to reach uh, these people? Okay, we're going to let John jump in. Thank you for calling in. John, you want to jump in with that? Um, oh, definitely. It's going to take time, but it's a very simple message. Show them by example that accountability works. In other words, hold office holders accountable. And when they don't, are not accountable, throw them out, put someone else's in, in there and show them that they are accountable and that they make a difference in their everyday lives. That's the key thing. People want to see the garbage picked up. They want to see the streets paved. They want to see the schools where their kids go to school teach, and they want to see their neighborhood safe, and they want health care that's affordable. Those basic everyday things. Those How can brown people want the same thing that white people want? We don't want, we want the American dream just like white people. We all in this country want the exact same thing. We don't want anything different, but when we see that we're getting less, then there's the problem. Yeah, then there's a the problem. We have to, like, like John said, take it step by step, conversation by conversation. You know, I, I, like I said, I, I wasn't always politically engaged myself. I sat on the sidelines. I sat because I didn't understand this. I didn't like it. I didn't want to be involved until it, until it hit me in a way that I could not uh, be, you know, turn my head or, or be, you know, ignore it. I had to be engaged politically. So we have to show people how this affects them directly. And listen, what David's like, David likes to say stories. When we hear these stories, David, we know where to, how, to, how to engage people, right? I want to I want to just mention something uh, that that kind of amplifies on what I want John was saying. Um, it, it's not just holding people accountable after the fact; it's before the fact. We have a lot of candidates that are coming coming out, you know, up on the you know on the uh, uh, in the in the fall election, and they have run for office before. All right, they've been in office before, and they are if they are centrist Democrats. They are zombie candidates. You know, they've been resurrected to walk around and do the sheep dogging and tell everybody around them, intimidate and bully the people around them into uh, uh, into saying, well, you don't have any choice. You don't want to vote for a Republican. And uh, I'm the only I'm the only thing out there. And they're, they're, uh, uh, they are, so we need to, we need to uh, really do some homework and some investigation into who these, who these people are. I don't believe that you could just look in somebody's eyes and determine that. There are people with records, you know, that, that, uh, that we can hold them accountable for and have them explain what the, what the heck they were doing, uh, you know, at this time or at that time, or what they were doing or something about their lives, you know, their actual lives. Uh, that indicates that. Now, it is true that when you get somebody who's totally lame, you know, we don't get it about what it's like to be a working person uh, who's had you know, a, a, a safe existence, you know, economically safe. That is, that's easily revealed. Um, uh, but but the other thing is, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, this is my one street of call, you know, is that. We need to find and and, uh, and address those white working people who are out there who are not voting for Trump, who are not voting for the Democrats because the Democrats to them are part of this elite, and uh, and they don't see their interests as as coinciding with 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 black people, and if we can get groups of black and white you know uh, organizers to go out there, find them and talk to them. Then we will have a then we will have a power that can't be beat. Um, there it is, and, we that, and that should be the democratic strategy, right there, David. Well, the 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 thing is that then we don't need the Democrats. We're going to have our own force. 
and they're going to have to determine they're going to have to determine what whether they how they are going to address us they're going to have to come to us begging and pleading and you know you know and 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 all of that other thing what can we do for you what can we do for you instead of begging and pleading uh, those moderate republicans uh, you know that they're looking for we will protect your tax you know rebates and your you know your this and your that and your and and your other thing we will protect your private schools we'll give you the the uh, uh, the uh, mortgage interest deduction on, on, on your taxes which you know two thirds of the people who own their own homes do not qualify for because they don't itemize their taxes and it's not the rich people who are doing that. Itemization is a way for, for, for rich people, that is people who are making $200,000, $250,000 a year, that 9.9%, .9%, that's a way for them to get tax rebates. And they so we get- can, We can go in all kinds of different directions. And I love the dialogue. I love the dialogue between John and David. I love doing this broadcast every week. Um, we're at the top of the hour. And I wanna thank you guys for joining us. We, where we have these hard conversations, you can go to um, our to my website. Um, David has a, a class that's coming up in September. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, John, we're working on withhold the vote. We are active on the back side of this. So what you see and what this platform is all about is is offering you an opportunity and offering us an opportunity opportunity to have these these conversations out loud and get off of social media and and really have the, the tough conversations. If Democrats want to win, we cannot be afraid. There's nothing that we should fear. I know that the Trump administration is, you know, that's causing people to be all of um, But that's the least of our concerns as Democrats, because they're going to do what they're going to do. But we need to galvanize, organize and work together to uh, to make things better for uh, our country and, and make things better within the, in the party itself. So I want to thank you for joining us. We will be back next week, Friday, 11 a.m., with more hard conversations and more acknowledging the vibe and more of withholding that vote. So thank you guys for joining us. Have a great afternoon. Bye.